Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. As you guys can see by the title of this video, this is like my moving out advice, like tips for moving out type of video. I've been wanting to make this video for so, so long, um, but I just wanted to come up with a good list of kind of like pieces of advice that I wish I knew before moving out. If you guys don't know and you are new to my channel and this is like the first video that you're watching from me, I am 22 years old. Um, I have been living out of home now for just over two years um, and I live in a one bedroom apartment with my fiance. We actually moved in after six months of dating and yeah, he was my boyfriend at the time now he's my fiance so yeah I've been living out of home for a while I feel like I've kind of got into the gist of having my own place and what it requires I feel like there's probably a few of you that are watching this now who are looking at leaving school going to uni moving out of home um and it is a big thing and it can be quite scary so I thought I'd sit down give you some advice and hopefully make the transition a little bit easier so the first tip that I have written down is actually something that you should start doing before you move out of home and that is to save money. Also, if I'm looking down a lot, it's because I'm just reading out of my trusty YouTube book. Saving is very, very important for when you first move into your first home or your first apartment or your first flat, wherever you are moving. When you are actually looking at moving out for the first time, there is usually two upfront costs that you have to pay. One of them is your bond. So your bond is like a certain amount of money that it will cost for you to actually move to your flat and your bond follows you wherever you go. If you keep the flat in good condition. So for example, say that your bond is 1,200. I feel like that's usually about the, the standard amount that a bond is. No matter where you go, so if you jump to from this flat that has a 1.2 bond to a 1.4, etc. Um, as long as you keep the flat in good condition, your bond will come back to you. So I think your bond is basically just like a kind of like a deposit that you put down just so that if anything goes wrong with the flat or you break something, then that money comes out of that like deposit in a way. But you will get it back once you stop flatting and want to buy your own home. I mean, I'm going to talk about flatting, mostly not buying a home because obviously I haven't bought a home yet. If you're buying a home, it's completely different. But yeah, flatting, um, your bond will be your biggest upfront cost. And then your second um, upfront cost that you will have is usually one or two weeks worth of rent. So for example, say that your rent is $250. If they want two weeks in advance, you will have to pay $500 upfront. That money you won't get back, but your bond you will get back. So I think my tip for saving money is to spend half of your salary and save the other half. I was doing this a lot when I lived at home but mostly it was because I was saving up for a car. I actually moved out quite suddenly. My parents always told me to spend half and save half and there'll be a lot of stuff that you'll have to buy as well up front for a first flat so yeah please 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 save as much money as you can while you are living at home, while you are living rent free, while you are living bill free. And again another tip that I have for prepping for moving out is to start collecting so just have like a box or like a have like a big like clear container so that you just put things in that you will need for when you move out. So if you see a blanket that you really like, buy it, put it in the box. If you see a toaster you really like, buy it, put it in the box. Cutlery is usually really, really cheap, so just buy a set of forks, put it in the box. Because if you start collecting before you move out, it makes transitioning into a flat a lot easier because it means the amount of things that you'll have to buy when you first move out will be a lot less because you've been collecting for a while. I saw Brittany Marie started doing this before she moved out. I thought it was a great tip. I was just one of those people that just didn't do that and I was like, oh, I'll just get it when I move out. And honestly, I wish I had started collecting earlier. If you're thinking of moving out, please, please, please start collecting. Start buying the basics so that it will cut down your initial cost of moving out. So yeah, that's any like kitchen appliances, any towels, any bedding. Great way to find cheap appliances or cheap items is op shopping. Op shops always have a good selection of kitchen things. A lot of basics go to the op shops. There are a few things I would recommend buying new. I personally usually like to buy all of my appliances brand new if I can just so that I know that they'll work and I've got the warranty if I need it. And then obviously you can go into like your retail shops. Um, one of my favorites, as you guys will all know if you've been on my channel for a while, is Kmart. Kmart has so many good like basics for such an affordable price. It is the perfect place to start shopping if you are renting for the 
the first time. I hardly ever used to shop at Kmart when I was living at home, but as an adult living away from home, Kmart is like my best friend. Like, there is so much good stuff at Kmart and it lasts a really, really long time too. Okay, so my next tip is something that you should do just before you are ready to move out and that is to declutter. So I cannot stress this enough how important it is to declutter before you move because I feel like when I first moved out of home, I, I did do quite a big declutter of things but now that I've been living out of home for like two years, I think after the first probably like few months, we decluttered so much because usually your first flat that you're going to have isn't the biggest of places and you're usually not going to have a lot of storage room unless you're buying a house. If you're moving out to buy a house then it is different because houses probably like multiple rooms, you've got cupboards, you've got this, you've got that. Whereas if you move into an apartment usually you don't have a lot of cupboard space. Yeah decluttering everything, your clothes, um, what you actually own is very 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 important. You basically just don't want to be filling your new flat with junk. If you've got a lot of stuff it's going to make unpacking really really difficult. Okay the next thing I've written down is kind of like when you've been flatting for a little bit and that is to treat yourself sometimes. So you don't want to be like going over the top with treating yourself and like spending lots and lots and lots of money. You just kind of want to buy like a few things here and there or like a pair of shoes one week, a bag the next or just like something that you've been wanting for a while and if you've worked really really hard at paying your bills and making sure they're done on time and you've been working really really hard I think it is really really important to treat yourself whether that is even for a coffee machine and you've been saving for like a few months for one you don't want to be paying them and all of your salary is going on bills if that makes sense like you want to have a little bit left over for yourself the next thing I have written down is very very important and that is make sure you're moving out for the right reason so you want to make sure you can actually financially support yourself you want to make sure that you're moving out for you and you're not moving out for a boy or a girl or you know you're moving because you feel like it is your time to move not because you're being forced forced to buy a boy or a girl or you feel put under pressure to move out whether that is even from your family if you feel pressure to move out but you're not ready to don't move or even like society or your friends if all your friends are moving out of home and you don't feel ready you don't just have to move out because all of your friends are everybody is on their own path everybody is unique and everybody has different times on when they feel ready for things and if you are not ready to move out of home at 18 that is fine if you are 22 and you're not ready to move out of home that is fine. I feel like with me it was kind of a bit of both. Like I was a hundred percent ready to move out but I also didn't want to move out and be on my own because A I feel like that wasn't safe and B because a lot of my friends were like moving to go to uni and I wasn't planning on going to uni so I didn't really have a lot of people that I could flat with here and then when Phil came along and he needed to move out of his place that he was in and I really wanted to move out of home we agreed and we moved out so it was kind of a little bit rushed but then I was also like mentally ready to move out of home I just didn't quite realize like I knew I'd be having to pay bills but I didn't quite realize how many the next tip I've written down is to be wise do not move into the first place that becomes available you want to make sure you're taking your time and picking a flat that suits you suits your needs and suits what you want your life to kind of look like in the future and just somewhere that you know you're gonna enjoy coming home to at the end of the day. I would always always highly encourage you to go to viewings take photos like ask questions about the flat i can do a whole separate video on like actual like viewings and questions you can ask and all that kind of stuff with flatting if you guys would like let me know if you're keen i'll make it just let me know down below so i feel like i have learned a lot of lessons the hard way um, and i would also recommend that you take a guardian or a family member or like a trusted friend to the viewings um you don't just want to go by yourself you want to get a second opinion from somebody else because there are a lot of unseen things that you won't realize happen with flats a lot of the time people don't actually care about the quality of the flat they just care about getting their money and getting their mortgage paid off because essentially if you are renting you are paying somebody else's mortgage for them 
in a sense. And Phil and I learned this the hard way. Our first flat that we moved into was extremely damp. We had to throw out multiple things because they went bad. I didn't go to the viewing the first time. It was Phil and Phil said it was fine. When in reality, if I had gone to the viewing, I would have said no. We struggled. Like it was really, really hard. Yeah, we ended up having to break our lease early, which cost us so much money just so we could move into this place here. So please, please, please learn from my mistakes and just always go to viewings that you're interested in because a property can look one way in photos but when you go and view it there's other things that you won't necessarily see from the photos if that makes sense and then the next tip I've written down is to look after your flat and this kind of like ties on making sure that you actually look after it and you take good care of it because then um, like I said before if you take good care of your flat all your bond money will come back and then that puts you in a good light with other tenancies if you and your landlord or you and your property property manager, whoever it is, are on good terms, they know you're a good tenant, then the next time you want to move you'll put them as a reference and the other person can contact them and be like, hey is this person a good person to put in my flat? They'll be like, yeah they're great, they always pay the rent on time, they're clean tidy people and they didn't break anything. So they'll be like, yep cool. Like you're more able to jump to different flats if you have a good reference from your first flat basically. A lot of the time on applications there'll be a question asking if you have ever not had your full bun, your full bund, your full bond refunded to you and if you put that you like that has happened to you we haven't had your full bond that automatically is a red flag for other tenancies looking at your application a lot of the time you will have flat inspections flat inspections basically is where your property manager or your landlord come to your flat and they just make sure that everything is in order everything is working everything is clean and basically that you're looking after your flat and then I come to my last tip so I feel like this is a very very obvious one that is paying bills are a thing so bills can be so expensive when you add them all up so like I said before when you move out of home your expenses increase but usually you have your rent you have power you have groceries if you drive you have petrol if not you will have some sort of transport fee unless you are lucky enough to be able to walk to work you will have contents insurance and anything else that you need for your flat internet like all of it adds up um, a lot of the bills are monthly. You want to make sure you're paying your bills on time and pay them early if you can. Usually you can get discounts if you pay things early, um, except for your rent. Your rent will usually be non-negotiable. If you start getting behind, things can get cut off. Um, you can actually get kicked out of your flat if you don't pay rent for a certain amount of weeks. And that is not what you want. And again, that puts a bad reference on your name. So when you're trying to get other flats, it is almost impossible. I mean, I also think it is important to not have your entire salary be spent on bills because while you may be in a really, really nice place, like living wise, if you don't have any money at the end of it to actually enjoy it and be able to go out and do things, then that's actually not fair on you. And personally, I just couldn't live like that. You can get into a lot of legal trouble if you don't pay your bills. So yeah, please pay them, please pay them on time or pay them early if you can. So there we go guys, those are all of my tips that I came up with for moving out of home. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Please turn on the notifications and check out my social media if you have not already. If there are any kind of like moving out of home related videos that you want me to film, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see and I can try and do some more for you guys. I feel like I've learned a lot, like I said, I've lived out of home now for just over over two years. I'm absolutely loving it. I love having my own space. I love being able to create my own rules. I love being able to style it exactly the way that I want it. Yeah, at the end of the day, your flat is somewhere you should enjoy coming home to, somewhere you feel safe and somewhere that you are proud to call home. I know it could be scary moving out of home, but it is a really, really fun experience, but you just want to make sure you've got the basic knowledge and you're prepped before you go because it will make transitioning a whole lot easier. Yeah, I think that's everything. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.